Hello, and welcome back to the videos in programming, in this case in Java. And in this video, we are going to map arrays. For example, imagine that you have an array with a list of players, and they are playing a game with consists in different rounds. And each, this is the score for each of the rounds. At the end, they also have their total of the rounds, save it in another array. So we have one string array, one integer array, and one two dimensions array that is integer. And we want to print something like, oh, player one is any with a total of 106, and which rounds are 70, 10, 23, and three, as you can see here how can we connect these different array in a way that they are um, always keep track of which is which when we are printing and the final outcome will look something like this you can see that you have player any total 106 and the round and then the next player and the next player and the next player until the last one we can easily change here to say player one player two player three player four player five and six. The first thing, and I will show you real quickly so that you have a big idea of what is going on, and then we're going to develop it together. We're going to create our three arrays. I'm assuming that you are able to scan the values from the user, um, but we can. you can do that by yourself. So let's assume that we already have the values and they are saved in these three arrays. I'm just creating a module that will take these three arrays and will print them in the order that we already saw in the output, which is producing the mapping. Cool. So the first thing that we need to do is, of course, as always, we're going to create a new class to produce this. Um, we can call it mapping array, but since I have already a class, call it like that, I will change that to arrays2. Um, okay, I just need to start with lowercase here. And we have, we want the boy mo function, yes, no problem. And that's it. As you can see, here is empty, right? Now, the first thing that we want is to create our three, our three arrays. One that is, as we saw before, the first one, which is the player's array, is a string array. You can pause the video here, and you can see what are the values for each position so that you can create your array. I will copy that from my previous, uh, my previous code. I will copy my three arrays and you and I will paste it here. The only one that could represent a little bit of challenge is the two-dimensional array if you haven't seen two-dimensional array yet. But the structure is pretty similar to one-dimensional array. The only thing is that, for example, you need to indicate that it's two-dimension and after you give it a name, when you are defining all of these all of these, and let me show you, this is your array, the same as here, right? What you are going to insert here are the values. However, the way that we insert the values differ from this one-dimensional array because we have multiple rows, right? If you see here, we have one row, two, three, four, six rows. So we need to first insert the values of the first row and then enclose those values by the brackets so that it notes, for example, if I have zero, one, two, uh, two, and three, because this array is, is, a, is a four positions in, in each row, these brackets enclose the first row. If I want to create, uh, insert a second row, I do the same thing. I create my brackets, and I put my value, for example, this, right? 
However, for organization purposes, it's better to insert each row, at least for me, in each level of the array. That's why you saw that I have this. I have my first row, comma, to indicate that it's the second row, my next row, here it is, comma, and so on. Like this, the compiler will know that each of these commas, and you can even jump it here. If you want to get even more visual, you can say, okay, this is my first row, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. That's it. Cool. Now that you have your trees arrays, and remember, you can pause the video, uh, populate your array, and then you can meet me here. We can print our arrays uh, mapping immediately inside of the main function. However, remember that we try to create programs that are organized, that have better logic, and that use the, the, the modulus as a way of divide and conquer. So we are going to have a modulus that will print for us. And later, we're going to use the modulus to, or the function, however you call it, to print our mapping. And we're gonna send these three, these three values, these three, sorry, these three arrays. So here is where my main function ends. I will create my modulo here. So I will create an static, an static modulo that will not return anything. It will just print, that's why it's void. And I will call it print array. Um, here will be my parameters inside of the function, right? So what parameter do I need? Well, the same as before, we're going to have a array of a string, which will be for the names. Remember that because this will exist only in the modulo, I don't need to give the same name to the arrays as when I create them. For example, this can call they can this can be called players, right? The next one will be again an array of uh, integers. We can have the totals first, or we can have the round. The order doesn't matter, but you just need to remember which order you assign so that you use the order the same order when you are calling your function later. So let's say that we are going to go with the total first. So it's a array of integers and it is called totals. You can you can call it a total score, for example, this score. And finally, we have another array of integer, but in this case, a two dimensional array. And we can call it scores. Now, we are going to uh, we are going to create or use these these arrays that will be passed to the modulo to produce the printing that we want, right? And when you finish, what you want to do is to here in your main function is you're going to call your modulo print arrays and you're going to send the parameters that you, the arguments that you want. For example, in this case, let's say that I'm printing here, print, uh, print array, and I will send the values. In this case, they are the, the arrays. The first one is going to be referring to the players. So I know that here my players are in the array names. So I have names. I will send names, I will send totals, and I will also send uh, round, rounds. Cool. For example, let's say that this function by now just print ha ha ha, for example. Print point out, print ln, and we have, and we have ha ha ha. Even if I'm passing the values in the arrays, we are not using it because we are just printing ha ha ha. But let's run this program and see your result, which will be ha 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 printed in the console, as you can see here. 
So we know that this is working, you don't have any error, that's it, no, everything good. Now, let's build our mapping. To build our mapping, we remember that we are working with arrays, and every time that we want to interact within the positions of the array, we need to create a for loop. So we're going to have a for loop that will go for each position of the array names, which are referring for the player, which is the same length uh, of the total, and which is the same number of rows that the array rounds have. So we all know um, that this is fixed here, and you can change it. And in case that this is growing, an example that will be growing on players, then you need to use array list because array will not change the size in the in the future. So here we are on a counter. Let's call it P for players, right? And we'll start in zero because this is the first position zero, and it will go until the array length. Which array? Well, players. It will go to players dot length and I have P plus plus here uh, players there you go and length length there we go so I will go from 0 to 5 because the length of names is 6 right now what do you want to do in each position in each of this position well you want to print the name so we will have system out uh, print and we want the name the name is saved where well in players in the position P because it will first first second third and so on let's see let's say that you just want to print the names and it will come and it will print the uh, six name that we have if we run this you will see that we have the six name good now after each name what do I want to do I want to print the um, I want to print the total right so I can copy this the same thing and now print T score in the same position because the position zero correspond the position zero of names correspond to the position zero of a score if I run this now I will have each of the names with the score now finally we get to the most interesting part which is printing the matrix and remember that each row have more than one position corresponding to each column right because of this, we need to have another for loop because this for loop will navigate through the rows, right? So we need to have another for loop for the column. We're going to have um, integer C, the for column, right? And remember that now we, the total length of the arrays in rows is 6. However, the length of the column here is 4. So we don't going to run until array that length because this will be representing the rows length we want to see in each of the row what is the length and to do this for example we want to run from 0 to that length we say the score right sorry scores in the position P so it will get to the first row for example and then it will check what is the length in this case 4 and uh, C++ now what we want to do is to in each of the column we want to print the value right and we have already the player name we have already the score now we want to print the value in each of the in each of the columns for the array scores so we have a scores, position P, but in the column C. So it will print the first one. If I leave a line here, it will print the next one in the next line. 
We don't want that. We want that next to each other. If we run that now, what will happen is that it will have any 106 and it will come here and say 70, 10, 23, and 3 in the next line but without any space because we are printing each of the values without a space. When to add a space here, we just need to concatenate a space. And there we go. Like that, we're going to have 70 space, 10 space, and so on. So let's see that. Let's run and see. There you go. For example, any 106 and this. As you can see, Boris here, is, is starting the same line. So after we finish this for loop, for the uh, scores for each player, we just want to print a space or a jump line. So we are going to print here a space. Put the jump the line, ln, remember? Um, we can also add it there. So now you can see that you have any 106 and this, Boris 180 and this. We finish with the logic, which was mapping the three arrays and combining them to print the result for each of the players individually. You can have a little, a little message, as I showed you at the beginning of the video, where you can say, for example, player, player, and then the name of the player, player and you have the name you can also add the number because you have p here so for example you can say player player and concatenate the number which is p plus one because p is starting zero and then you concatenate the player number one and you have the two and it will say player number player one with a space and the two dots and then the name. Um, we just need the concatenation here. And the same for the score, you can have here a score, a score, and you concatenate the a score. And for the rounds, we can have rounds and then we have each of them, so we can copy from here, but without ln because we don't want to jump the line. So we have here, um, actually, this is scores and this is total. Total scores, scores, and here we finish this. Now we can see that when we run, we are going to have a better structure. Player one, Annie, total score, this, scores, this. If you want another space, another line, you can force another line, doing this again, for example, or you can use a slash n as well. Um, here you go, Annie, total score, and scores, boom, finish. This is how you were able to map these three matrices. In the next video, and once you learn of objects, you can then, instead of going through the three tedious process of mapping the three, ma the three arrays, you can create an object of array. So in each of the positions of an array, you will have objects and each of the objects have inside a name rounds and total it's a better structure and it's something that we will see in the next video bye bye